<clears throat> All right. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day, you guys. And yeah, I got a pretty rad vlog planned out for you guys. I didn't have a vlog last week because I was traveling in Sweden for the beyondvape.se vape meet vape event that was there. But what I'm going to do this week in this vlog is include all of the footage that I show. Well, I just punched a box by accident. I talk with my hands and I like punched a box. There's like a box right here. And I was like, Hleh! go away box. But what I'm going to include in this week's vlog is all of the footage that I shot while I was in Sweden. It's kind of condensed down into about 20, 25 minutes or so, and what that's going to replace is, I don't even remember. I'm going to put, I'm going to do the thing. I'm going to try to do the thing again where I put all the segments right here so you can see what's included in this vlog and what's not included in this vlog. Of course, we're going to have news and advocacy. Of course, we're going to have a beer tasting. We're probably going to replace getting to know Grim Green and the review for things that never got reviewed with the Sweden footage and then all the other segments, including, you know, uh, vape mail and retro vaping and uh, news and advocacy and viewer mails and juice tasting and the comments of the week. Those are all still going to be included. But welcome, welcome. All of that is just semantics. Welcome, welcome to the vlog. And before we get too far into this vlog, I do want to mention the sponsor of this vlog, tpdcertified.com. And keep in mind, tpdcertified.com is paying me zero money for this sponsorship. They're just a good company that we are using to go through the TPD process. TPD certified experts in the field of TPD compliance, offering the most all-inclusive TPD service on the market today. Everything you need in one place to give your brand access to one of the largest and rapidly growing vaping markets on the planet for the vapors from the vapors made to support the community and the industry worldwide head over to tpdcertified.com and get in touch today yeah absolutely great company they're making it uh i wouldn't say simple because whenever you're dealing with the government and regulations nothing is ever really simple but they're making it as simple as it possibly can be so yeah Good time. So the first thing we need to do in this vlog is I'm going to talk real quick about what I have been vaping. First up on the list, yeah, Alter Ego Creations or what is it called? Alter, I think it's Alter Ego Creations or Alter Ego Alter Ego, Alter Ego. Yeah, it might just be called Alter Ego. This is the Evoke. Don't worry, I'll have a link down in the description. I got it topped with a red recoil RDA and a gold flaky DHD macaron drip tip. Loaded up with that cereal flavor, that Lucky Bird flavor. In fact, I think I just dripped, so we're good to go. Dual parallel, unregulated, fully mechanical. I've really been enjoying this. I mean, it's great. I took it pardon with me. I took it with me to Sweden and I vaped it while I was there. It's, it reminds me of the noisy cricket. I mean, in a lot of ways, like form factor wise, like it's much better fit and finish, obviously, but just that size that like, it's basically just two batteries next to each other. I love that particular size of mod and I love the noisy cricket because it was that size and I'm really enjoying this again because it is that size and it also happens to be a damn, damn, damn good vape. The next thing I've been vaping is this Joytech Evic Primo SE. And I know that's a really long name, but this is the single 18650 Joytech Evic Primo, and it comes with its own unique styled tank. And the really, the huge bummer about this that I've recently discovered is you need a tool to get the coil head in and out. You put the coil head in upside down, then you fill it up from the bottom, and then you screw the bottom cap on. And you need this tool to like crank down the coil head into the chimney so that when you go to refill it the next time, when you take off the base, it doesn't pull out the coil head as well. And unfortunately for people like me, I have lost said tool already. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to change the coil head in this. Should be an interesting experiment when I do though. Other than that, it's a really good vape. This is filled up with the, uh, you know, the yogurt. I'll put a link down in the description. There's just, there's seriously so much logo and graphics and branding on this. It's the Montreal Ohm Boys Drip City, established 2014, tasty with a chance of clouds. Mix Master Mike, more stuff at the bottom. I think I went through this whole song and dance in last week's vlog. Can't even remember the name of it. I think it's called Mac Moo Mooney. Moo Mooney. Don't remember. It's a tasty little yogurt flavor, and I wish they didn't have so many damn words on the label. 
But that's been a really nice vape, and yeah, the Mi 1. Uh, Mi 1 goes with me everywhere. I was using the other Mi 1, and now I'm using the Grim Green Mi 1. They're the same Mi 1, same coil head, same fit and finish, same construction, just mouth to lung happiness. I have this loaded up with 18 milligram Glacier Banana, and this is something I take with me everywhere. In fact, when I just went and saw Metallica, guess what I brought with me? <laughs> that's right, I brought the Mi 1 with me. Yeah, just because for some stealthy stealth vaping in the crowd, right? Ah. Uh. I love the way that 18 milligram just slays your throat. It just gets in there and it just kicks it like with a karate kick, like right into your throat area. You know, back when I first started vaping, throat hit was all I cared about. I just wanted more and more throat hit. The way that people obsess over clouds now is how I used to obsess over throat hits. I used to say I loved reckless throat hits, just reckless throat hits and really all I really like is like a 50-50 PGVG in 18 milligram to me that's the perfect throat hit. Also, no surprises here, still using that Roxasa mods with that uh, Dovpo atomizer filled up with Lane Cove Alice from the, uh, you know, Lane Cove line. And don't worry, again, I'll always put links to everything that I talk about in the description to this video so you can check out any links or products or whatever the hell. I don't care. I'm not the boss of you, but I will have links down in the description. This, ah, it's just a damn good vape. For some reason, I have a 0.4 ohm dual fuse Clapton on here, and with a single 18650, I can rock it at 49 watts and get plenty of decently warm vapor, but no no battery, no weak battery, and that's why I'm enjoying this. Good. It's just, it's just good. And lastly, this is a Revenant. This is a Cartel Revenant, and this is a new Cartel Revenant. It's topped with the Reload RTA and RDA, not RTA, RDA. And it's topped with a, uh, you know, a DHD nub tip. Look how cool and great and matchy this is. So, quick story. I had a sad moment about two weeks ago when I dropped my Cartel Revenant from about chest high. It hit the ground and broke like a motherfucker. The battery door was all jacked up and broke, and there were shit rattling on the inside, couldn't put batteries in it, couldn't turn it on, and I was probably the most bummed I've ever been thus far in my life. No, that's actually a huge exaggeration, but I was really actually very bummed out, and I was like, well, shit, and I was telling Ruby Roo before we recorded the podcast last week, I was like, I'm gonna buy a new Revenant. I need to find a new Revenant, and I want something with yellow in it. That was like the only thing I wanted. I told Ruby, I just want yellow in my Revenant. I've had blue and purple and red and all this stuff, but I wanted something with yellow in it. So I go to Sweden and Matthias Lunderberg, who runs the beyondvape.se over there, he runs Lunderberg Cast Custom Tattoo Supplies, he was walking around and vaping this Revenant. And I said, Matthias, what can I trade you for this mod? I will trade you anything I have right now to get my hands on that Revenant because it's perfect. It's yellow and blue. It's not only the colors of Sweden, but it's yellow, and I wanted yellow in it so bad. So I traded him, you know, a thing. Might have been uh, a top secret thing that I had had last week that I couldn't show anybody. Huh? Wink. Big wink. Huge winks. Is that too subtle of a wink? But yeah, he gladly accepted my trade, and off I was with my brand new, uh, orange, or orange, yellow and blue Cartel Revenant, Reload RDA on top, Goon Tip. Uh, this is loaded up with Pink Paradise from Bonsai Vapors. This has just been my jam, man. This is just my daily banger vape, and I love it. I'm definitely taking this with me to ECC in two weeks. So good, so fantastic, just a, such a good vape. I want some more. And yeah, speaking of ECC, it's in two weeks. If you guys aren't aware, the biggest consumer vape show in the United States is happening in two weeks in Ontario, California. I'll post a link down in the description to the website, but I'm gonna be there. The whole squad's gonna be... <coughs> what? <coughs> What was that all about? Throat? I'm gonna be there. The whole squad's gonna be there. Dwayne's gonna be there. Ruby and Josh are gonna be there. Uh, Jess is gonna be there. Kent Twisted Messes is gonna be there. I know for sure DJ LSB Vapes is gonna be there. I know for sure Vaping Heathen is gonna be there. I cannot wait to meet Vaping Heathen. I just wanna meet the guy because I feel like we're gonna get along really well. You know what I mean? Like you see those people in the community or online or on the internet somewhere and you look at them and you think, what? We could, we could probably hang out. Like we could probably 
probably hang out and it would be totally cool. Vaping Heathen is that guy for me. I want to meet him and I want to hang out with him because he seems totally cool. And at the very least, we could at least talk about Star Wars, right? So yeah, I think that's all we have to talk about here on the couch. And uh, what we're going to do right now is jump into some news and advocacy, which means we have to go back over there, back to the desk. All right, so I got a couple little uh, news items here that I wanted to talk about. I got an email from a guy in Indonesia. We're gonna be talking about Indonesia advocacy as well as an article that I got from a fellow named Marvin. One of my subscribers named, named Marvin sent this over to me and it comes from scienceblog.cancerresearchuk.org. Uh, this was released earlier, February this year, and it says, New study comes the closest yet to proving that e-cigarettes aren't as dangerous as smoking. Cool? Cool. And good lord, I wish I could reply to the comments in this article. I can't figure out a way to reply to this person, but there's, an, there's a comment here at the top that says, This I agree. And so the whole article, and I'm, I'm, obviously I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm going to pick out a, a couple things that I thought were really interesting. And additionally, there's an infographic on this site that shows the evidence so far that shows that e-cigarettes are far, far safer than smoking. And keep in mind, this is coming from Cancer Research UK. E-cigarettes contain nicotine, but not cancer-causing tobacco. One, two, nicotine is addictive, but underlined, bold, does not cause cancer. Tobacco is the biggest cause of preventable death in the UK, over 100,000 deaths per year. Passively, number four, sorry, I'm reading these kind of out of order. Number four, passively breathing vapor from e-cigarettes is very likely to be harmful. Very, sorry, should have read that. Should have, I can't, I'm okay. Here's the thing. Little quick getting to know Grim Green thing here. Uh, I spent most of my life being very, very dyslexic. I did really poor in math and no one could figure out why I was doing so bad in math until they figured out that I was dyslexic and that if you transpose the numbers that a lot of my math was correct I was just seeing them backwards so sometimes not often but sometimes now as an adult I have a very hard time reading articles which is why I stumble over my words sometimes I'm very aware of my dyslexia and it takes all of my effort when I'm reading to not read things out of order so that's going to happen from time to time but number four passively breathing vapor from e-cigarettes is unlikely to be harmful. Number five, growing evidence shows that e-cigarettes are helping people to stop smoking. Yes, preaching to the choir. This is stuff that we, we all know. This is stuff we have all heard. There's a quote in here from Dr. Lion Schaub of the UCL. The full benefit of using e-cigarettes is from completely, the full benefit of using e-cigarettes is from completely stopping smoking. Yes, this is stuff we know. This is all stuff we know. But what really caught my eye was this comment down here at the bottom from a girl named Marissa. I'm assuming it's a girl. Marissa, she says, this, I agree, is all about the risk of cancer in the case of studies. Okay, either I'm reading this poorly or it's written poorly. And I kind of feel like this is written pretty poorly. This, I agree, is all about the risk of cancer in the case of studies. That's not even a sentence. She goes on to say, however, there are studies that show that the flavoring could be responsible for some serious lung problems. Another point to raise is that a smoker puts down or out a cigarette when smoked usually, but those using e-cigs seem to increase their usage, and I have watched the non-stop e-cig to mouth progress. I am certain that most smoke these days is at least three to four I am certain that most smoke these. We don't smoke them. We, we vape them, Marissa. We, we vape them. I'm certain that most smoke these at least three to four times more often than they used to cigarettes. Until all the research is in, I, for one, will not be trying them again. The vapor causes me to be short of breath and leaves me with an irritated throat. You mean to tell me, Marissa, that you are okay with rolling organic dried plant matter into a paper tube, lighting it on fire and inhaling the smoke, that it, you're okay with that, but because the vapor made your throat irritated, that for some reason that, 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 that no one else should try them until all of the research is in. Is all of the research in on anything that we do in our lives? Is all of the research in on chair sitting and all the possible safety and health hazards that could come from sitting in a chair? And I mean, not just like having it slide out from underneath you and having it hit the ground, but like sitting in a sedentary 
sedentary position or maybe at different heights? Is there research on what's healthier to sit at a higher height or a lower height within chairs? You can't rely on all the research is in. What you need to do is trust science because what science does is it takes all of the available information and the scientists look at it and they decipher it and they do experiments to prove whether it's incorrect or correct. And if it's correct, that has to be a repeatable thing. And then when it is repeatable, it has to get peer reviewed by other scientists and all the scientists go, okay, based on all of the information and data that we have, which is a lot, this is our conclusion. This is this is our conclusion for all of this data and evidence. And it doesn't ever, ever include all of it. No, no research, no conclusion includes all research in the world. That's not an attainable thing, Marissa. And I would love to know where the studies show that flavoring could be responsible for serious lung problems. If you're talking about diacetyl and the popcorn lung thing, not only is that not accurate, but it's been debunked over and over and over again. But this is interesting. I like seeing someone else's point of view on this. Someone who is currently, I'm assuming, a smoker because she said she tried e-cigarettes in the past and she said, I for one will not be trying them again. Well, I for one will. So like I said, I'm not going to read this whole article, but I just found this little part interesting when it says, just how safe are they? The study, this study, included a group of e-cigarette users who had been using them for an average of around 17 months. Uh, look, I've been using these for eight years. You know what I mean? If anybody wants to do a thing, if there's a doctor out there, you want to examine my lungs, eight years worth of vapor has passed through these lungs. I should go get my lungs x-rayed and fucking vlog it. Can you, are you allowed to shoot YouTube videos in a doctor's office? I feel like that might not be allowed. If that's allowed, I'm definitely gonna go x-ray my lungs after eight years of vapor passing through them. But anyway, it says this study included a group of e-cigarette users who've been using them for an average of around 17 months and measured the levels of nicotine and 26 potentially harmful chemicals in their body by looking at samples of their urine and saliva. The team compared the results to cigarette smokers and people who both both smoked and use e-cigarettes. They also looked at people who use nicotine replacement therapy or NRTs, which is commonly used to help people stop smoking as a long-term alternative. We looked at NRT users because we know these products are safe to use. We thought uh, they would be a good comparison, he adds, because long-term users get their nicotine hit from a smoke-free source, much like e-cigarette users. Long-term users get their nicotine hit from a smoke-free source, such as e-cigarette users. I guess I never really thought about the fact that NRT users, like if you chew gum or have the patch, that you could be a long-term nicotine gum chewer. That was never something that I really thought existed. I assumed that, wow, I guess you chew the gum until you're done and then uh, you stop chewing the gum. But if it's the same as vaping, sure, chew, chew gum, chew nicotine gum. Chew, keep chewing it. Keep get that's if that's how you get your nicotine, then do it. I get mine from vapor, and I guess it's really no different if you're chewing gum every day or if you're vaping every day. That's just that's interesting. I never thought about that. It goes on to say, interesting. The nicotine levels found in the samples from e-cigarette users were very similar to those who used NRT and to smokers. This suggests that people are able to satisfy their nicotine cravings through using either of these products. Part of the reason why people use e-cigarettes is to stop smoking, and we have shown that they provide effective delivery of nicotine. Boom, roasted right there. But the key finding came when the team looked at the samples at the levels of the potentially toxic chemicals. They found that there was a remarkable difference in the levels of these substances between the different groups. In fact, one chemical called NNAL, known to cause lung cancer, was 97% lower in e-cigarettes compared to smokers. Let me just read that one last part one more time. In fact, one chemical, called NNAL, known to cause lung cancer, was 97% lower in e-cigarette users compared to smokers. Not only did e-cigarette users have lower levels of these substances compared to smokers, but they were also found to have very similar levels to people using NRT, something that the doctor Sa Sahab, oh, sorry, Shahab? 
Okay, I'm gonna go with Shahab. That sounds right. Something that Dr. Shahab is quick to point out uh, is known... Okay, one more time. Something that Shahab is quick to point out is known to be relatively safe. We have three decades of research into the safety of NRTs, and we've not picked up any significant long-term health issues, he said. So, if e-cigarettes have the same effect on the body as an established stop-smoking treatment, then surely we can assume that these products are relatively safe, too. While nothing can ever be considered completely safe, which, yeah, I've gone on that rent more times than I can count, we can compare it to other things that we experience in our day-to-day lives. And I just want to read this last paragraph that says, what does this mean right now? This study confirms that e-cigarettes are far safer than smoking. If you're a smoker, the best thing you can do for your health is to stop, and the most effective way to do so is through stop smoking services. Mm, um, Okay. And as we've written about previously, a number of successful quitters have managed to ditch the SIGs by using both e-cigarettes and specialist support. I only used e-cigarettes. But this doesn't mean that e-cigarettes are entirely without harm, as nothing in your life is entirely without harm. If you're a non-smoker, it is not advisable to start vaping. Uh, Yeah, sure. I mean, it's not advisable to start vaping, but I'm a freedom guy, and I believe that if you are an adult and you are a free American adult living in America, that you should be able to start vaping if you want to. We can't yet be certain of the long-term side effects across all devices and liquids, so it's just best not to pick up the habit. So although it's unlikely e-cigarettes will be shown to be completely harmless, nothing ever is, today's results are a landmark moment in showing just how much safer they are than smoking. Yes, I will be posting a link to this down in the description. And thank you, Marvin, for sending that my way. Yeah. And I got another email here from a guy in Indonesia, and I'm going to call him Bayu. I think I, I think he's written in before, and I've read his emails before in this vlog, but his name is Bayu. B-A-Y you. I'm going to call him Bayou. And he says, what's up, Dangle Clack Squad? That's, uh, you know, that's a joke from the Culture of Clouds podcast. Me and Ruby Drew do a podcast. Did everybody know that? We do a pretty fun little podcast. You can check it out on SoundCloud and iTunes. Just search for Culture of Clouds. We just did our 53rd or 54th episode. I'm not quite sure, but we're steamrolling right along and having a great time in Dangle Clacks. Hashtag Dangle Clacks is, is, from the pod, is from the podcast. But anyway, he says, what's up, Dangle Clack Squad? Get ready for a spicy and long email and please show Nico before you read this on your vlog. Please show Nico before you read this on your vlog. Are you talking about Nico that sends me comments of the weeks? Are you talking about Nico, my dog? Do you really want me to show my dog your email? I mean, she's sleeping on the bed. I would hate to wake her up just to show her this email. She won't even understand like really what's going on. I don't think she can read. In fact, she wouldn't be able to read this anyway, Bayou. Are you sure? It's me again, Bayou, from the suburbs between Jakarta and West Java, Indonesia. With this email, I want to give you some love from Jakarta, Indonesia. Yesterday, I was excited when I seen this Uh, Instagram post from one of Jakarta's big vape stores. Screenshots are included. Finally, Jakarta will have this kind of open discussion between vapors, government, health associations, and anyone can come. I tried my best of translating this post so you can understand and share that we, Indonesian vapors, are alive and well and keep fighting for our rights to vape just like you guys over there in the United States. We wish you guys good luck and congrats for Gottlieb and the FDA date change thingy. Progress is good, bro. Yeah, absolutely progress is good. Shout out to the Indonesian vapors, you guys. Okay, so here goes. The YPKP, Indonesian Public Health Monitor, and Ministry of Vape Indonesia, MOVI for short, one of Indonesia's big vape chain stores, call to all vapors to attend the giving full support and panel discussion session with the topic get this, Nick. He didn't parentheses, and whenever I see that, I kind of feel like an elbow, like, hey, get this, Nick. Vaping as a potential alternative for other nicotine products. These will all, uh, the, these people will also attend. The Indonesian Ministry of Health, the Indonesian Food and Drug Watch, our version of the FDA, and Indonesian Public Health Association. When vaping is currently suppressed by hoax and black campaigns, we'll get together and show that we, the vapors, live in a community with education and focusing on discussion and forums that are really constructive and it will lead to better and useful solution for our public health. Come and see us at this event or at least tell people about this event. Share it around, tag people in it, everything. Our rights are being brought forward and this is your chance for you guys to be active. All vapors, smokers, press, 
anyone can come. Thank you for the support. So yeah, I hope this is a fresh start for something new and something good in Indonesian vape industry and communities. And uh, I know this isn't what he wrote. This is me. I know I don't I don't know why I feel the need to do that. Whenever I'm reading an email and I pause and then I pause and I start looking at the camera, I feel like I need to say, I'm not reading the email anymore. This is me talking. But anyway, I'm not reading the email more. This is me talking. I know that Indonesia has a heavy, heavy concentration of smokers. People start smoking there very, very young. From what I've seen on the news and on the internet, I think that they start smoking there very, very young. And I know they have a huge population of smokers. So the idea that all of these organizations are getting together under the guise of vaping as a potential alternative to other nicotine products, I feel like this is a really good, a really great step in the right direction for Indonesia. So this is now back to the email. He says, I hope this is a fresh start for something new and something good in the Indonesian vape industry and communities. I just want to share this with you. Thanks for the birthday shout out last month. That's right. Funny thing is you say my name perfectly in the vlog. Look it up, lol, but failed to say my name on the Culture of Clouds podcast, Listener Mail Spectacular. Oh, that's right. We answered. Look, Bay, Bay, you, you're all over the place, man. You've been in the vlog twice now and on the Culture of Clouds podcast. Like, Give someone else a chance, bro. I'm not offended or mad or anything. It's just good for me. Good laugh, sir. Sorry for the long email, as always, and my bad writing skills. I wrote this while headbanging to hate breed. Sorry, not sorry. No, that's totally allowed. Uh, legend, wait for it. Dairy. That's right. Bye. Anyway, so yeah, that's good. I feel like that's a really good thing that's happening in Indonesia. I don't know anything about the Indonesian vape community. I don't know anything about the Indonesian uh, vape industry. Like, what companies are there? I know that my favorite mech mod comes out of Indonesia, that vape work stat, you know, uh, Delrin Neuraled guy, that mech mod. That's my favorite mech mod at the moment, and I know that comes from Indonesia. So, yeah, absolutely. Vapors of Indonesia, get together, do this thing, vaping as a potential alternative for other nicotine products. That's great. Great, great, great. I think that's just great. So, yeah, thank you, Bayou. I'm going to say Bayou. I'm going to say Bayou for now. Thank you, Bayou for sending that in. Let's see what's next on my vlog notes. I don't even know what I have next. Oh, that's right. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to pop upstairs. We're going to get in a time machine when the sun was still up and we're going to pop upstairs. We're going to taste some freaking beer. All right, guys, well, we're back out here on my patio and we're going to taste another beer and we're continuing down the, you know, uh, simple, regular, you know, readily available sort of every man beer uh, road. And I thought I'd try some Sapporo. In fact, I have never consumed Sapporo outside of a sushi restaurant because when you go to a sushi restaurant, they have, you know, Sapporo and then the other one and I don't ever I can never remember the name of what the other one is It starts with a K, but I can never say it correctly And I always go with the Sapporo because I associate this beer this type of beer Sapporo with sushi So I'll be you know getting down on some shashimi shas what? Hi, sashimi, and uh, yeah, I'll be knocking out a Sapporo. I'm not gonna be a savage. I'm not gonna completely just drink this out of the can. Dorian three tap method. I am gonna be pouring this into a uh, cup. It's gonna be a modern times cup, which is, yeah, you know, slightly ironic, I guess. Um, this beer is just clear. It's, it's almost nothing. I feel like there's no substance to this beer at all, except for head. Yeah, G good job there, Nick. Good job. That's too much head to drink through like a man. How do you get the head to go away without sticking your finger in it? Because I don't want to stick my finger in it. We'll just let this settle for a second. Let's actually look up Sapporo and see what Beer Advocate has to say about it. I can't imagine that it's going to get, you know, shining, glowing reviews or anything like that. But it's, it's worth a shot. All right. It might not even be on Beer Advocate. Oh, yeah, here it is. Sapporo Premium Beer. Yeah, it is rated as a poor beer. Beer. It's a 68 out of 100%, and usually the 100% spots are reserved for, you know, like these ridiculous seasonal brews, these Central Coast quads and these Belgian quads and these other, like, you know, heady topper and stuff like that that you really can't get. Sapporo is, uh, 
is readily available anywhere. I bought this can at a gas station, and it is rated as 68% on Beer Advocate. But you know what? That's just a number. There are certain times in my life when Sapporo is just going to hit the spot perfectly, and one of those times is with sushi. In fact, I have a feeling after I drink this, I'm probably going to be craving sushi. Might have to get sushi for dinner now. Yeah. It's fine. It's a fine beer. It doesn't pretend to be anything it's not. This is a very sessionable, I mean, drinkable, drinkable beer. You could just drink Sapporo and drink Sapporo over and over again. It's not amazing. It's not going to change your life. If you don't like beer, chances are you're probably not going to like Sapporo. If you're a person looking to get into beer, don't make Sapporo your first stop on your journey. It's not really bitter or gross or anything like that. It's just lacking a lot of substance. It's like it's like a light, it's almost like a light beer. It's like Bud Lighty, you know what I mean? It's like budweiser -y. I can't even remember the last time I had a Budweiser. Nope, next week. Next week, let's do Budweiser, you guys. Let's just get a can of Budweiser Original and drink it here on the vlog because I have a feeling it's going to be a lot, a lot like this Sapporo here. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's not offensive, but it's not great. One of the things I do like about Sapporo is how clean it is. Once you drink it, it's like 7-Up. It just doesn't linger in your mouth. And Sapporo actually has a surprisingly creamy mouthfeel. That's one characteristic that I can really get out of this beer that I don't find in a lot of other similar style beers is that, like, very slightly creamy, creamy mouthfeel. Which, I mean, you wouldn't expect it out of, uh, you know, a basically transparent beer that you can buy for two bucks at any gas station. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's whatever. It is what it is. I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm going to drink it. I'm going to finish this can. Uh, I brought this up here to do sort of a pairing with, but I'm not sure how well this is going to go. This is Lucky Bird from, uh, you know, Bird is the Word, the Blue Bird e-liquids. This is on the Evoke from Alter Ego Creations with a red recoil RDA on top. And I don't think this is going to be like an amazing beer pairing, but I think it'll be fine. Just like Sapporo, I think it's just going to be fine. Oh. Yeah, sure. It's fine. Like I said, it's fine. It's whatever. The juice isn't like bringing out any characteristics of the beer, and the beer isn't necessarily bringing out any like strong characteristics of the of the juice. This is a cereal flavor, tasted with a very average, very transparent, although slightly creamy and very clean Sapporo beer. It honestly reminds me about of some of the beer that I was getting in Sweden. In Sweden, all their beer is really low ABV and very sort of light. They have a lot of like Budweiser PBR type of beers there. They, they very rarely, I didn't see any like stouts or porters or anything like that. They really like IPAs and they really like a little bit lighter of a beer because they drink beer a lot. And I'm not saying that as like a negative thing. The people of Sweden are wonderful, but they drink beer. And I was always drinking beer. And if I didn't have a beer, someone around me would say, hey, you don't have a beer. Do you want a beer? I'll get you a beer. You want a beer? Here, you look like you need a beer. And it was great. And honestly, this Sapporo kind of reminds me of some of the beers that I got over there in Sweden. Yeah, sure. It's whatever. See, I'm already drinking this whole thing down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for the sun to go down so I can start shooting the rest of the vlog. But I'm gonna sit down around my patio while the sun goes down. I'm gonna vape and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna enjoy a Sapporo. So yeah, let's get back to the vlog, there, friends. Okay, cool. So I got some vape mail to open up, and I figured I would do that on camera, like I do every week. Didn't know why I said that. Completely unnecessary information. But I do have some vape mail here. What I have that I want to open first is I have two of these huge boxes this. Oh, I'm not sure who that one's from, but there's another one here from freaking Uwell. Uwell. Dude, seriously, this is intense. All right, let's open these. All right, and this is... What the hectic is this? And why do I have so many? This is the Pipe 2? The Pipe 2. It's just, oh no, this is the Pipe 3. Sorry, I misread my Roman numerals. This is the Pipe 3. Oh, this came from Heaven's Gifts. Yeah, this came from Heaven's Gifts, and there's two, three, four, five, six of these. So, 
Yeah, I feel like this is something that I might need to set up tonight and see if it's worth it. Maybe some uh, patrons in the $2 club want to uh, get uh, get down on some hot pipe three action. Fuck, I'm just gonna open this right now real fast. I gotta see what this pipe looks like. Oh wow, that is crazy. This is like a this is like a crazy legit looking pipe and it's gigantic. What the what? Look at this thing. Look at this. Whoa. Whoa. Oh fuck an o-ring fell out. Ugh. Um um maybe you go up here. That kind of looks like where an o-ring could have gone. It's got this little does this come out? Okay, kind of unscrewing a little bit. Okay. There's a little coil head right here. That's weird. Okay, I'm assuming this is like just a little mouth to lung kind of banger here. Not quite sure how this... What size battery is that? Oh, good lord. I hope I have the correct size battery for this. If I don't have the correct size battery for this, we're not going to be able to vape it. And that kind of bums me out. I can't tell if this is an auto switch or not. I don't know. There you go. Look at that. The Pipe 3. And it just stands on its own little flattened base here. But that's kind of... I could see vaping this. I could see that. All right, well, crazy. Pipe three. Okay, well, this right now is the contender to get set up. If nothing else more interesting comes along, then we're gonna set up this pipe three. Okay, now it's time to open the gigantic U-Well box. They said they were gonna send me a tank. They said, hey, there's a new tank and we're gonna send it to you. And I said, oh, okay, cool, yeah, send me a tank. Anybody wanna take a guess as to how many tanks are in here? Doesn't matter, because I'm only keeping one of them, and the rest are for you guys. So there could be 800 tanks in here. I'm okay with that. What is happening? What is this? What? What? Whoa, what? Wait, what? <laughs> they sent me a giant wooden egg that says Valerian on it. I'm not even joking. What's in here? Okay. It's another smaller. It's like Russian dolls. Are you serious with this packaging? Good lord, that is so unnecessary. And I bet you there's one tank in here. I'm guessing. I'm just gonna take a guess and say that there's one tank in here. Yep, that's one tank. One singular tank. One, one singular tank. And before we look at the tank, I just want to remind everyone what this tank comes packaged in. In case, in case you were short on gigantic wooden Russian dolls? Yeah, that's what it comes fucking packaged in. This is insane. Why would they, what the hell, you well? This is weird, man, even for you guys. But yeah, this looks like a sub -ohm tank. It's the new you well sub -ohm tank. The coil heads look strikingly similar in size and, uh, you know, shape to those TFV8, TFV12 style coil heads. This isn't something I'm gonna set up right now, I don't think, but yeah. There's a tank. There's a sub ohm tank. <sighs> Lots of airflow. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm gonna put you away for a later date. Um, these are two boxes that are coil heads, I believe. Oh no, these are all tanks. Okay, there you go. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. So they sent me eight, nine, ten tanks. Not bad. So I get to give nine tanks away to my patrons. Let me just make sure that those numbers are accurate and this isn't actually coil heads. Yeah, there you go. All right, I got a whole mess of tanks that are going out to the patrons probably this month. I might actually do two or three, uh, you know, of the banana sticker clubs. They sent me another egg. There was another egg. I saw another egg. Oh, here's the other egg. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. God, you well. Oh, why did you, why? Why the eggs? Why? What? Why? These are just gonna go directly in the garbage. I'm throwing this much wood away, just directly into the garbage. I don't, I don't have a use for this, you well. This is useless to me. Okay. Bye. Can't even imagine how much it costs you to ship that. Those eggs aren't light. That is a heavy egg. Never thought I'd say that's a heavy egg in real life. Like that's a sentence I just never thought I would say. Okay, and well, I got some Valerian uh, coil heads as well. So here, we're gonna set you giant box over to the side, you other giant box over to the side. And I got some coil heads, so cool. Cool, cool, cool. Let's keep going here. I believe this box is from Joy E Tech. And what did Joy Tech send? Oh, that's right, they do this now. This is your new samples for testing purposes. Yeah, I never get the original packaging anymore. I just get a, a box with, uh, you know, some other things in it. And that 
is super ugly. Wow, that's ugly. That is a super ugly mod. Thoughts? That thing looks fucking ugly. Eki, the Eki with Procore motor. The Eki with Procore motor. Okay, that's a thing. I remember getting the email from Joytech and there's already a new firmware update and they sent me the newest firmware so that I can put it on this thing. Ah, the Eki. Wow, that is an ugly mod. Sorry, I just think that's ugly as hell. Look at the picture on there. That just looks fugly. Fugly, fugly. All right, no big deal. That's what we do. We just move on to something else. But uh, yeah, Joytech Eki. Eki. E-K-E-E. -E. Tell me how to pronounce that, dude. Kidding me right now? I kind of want to stop saying yes to reviewing things from China just because they package them so fucking obnoxiously. Oh, something from Advocan. Haven't seen anything from Advocan in a while. The Manta RTA. Sure. There you go. No idea what this thing looks like, but they sent some spares, which means I get to do these in the $2 sale. We only got like two more packages left, so what's it gonna hurt to just kinda take a quick look at this RTA real fast? Yeah, there you go. Look at that. Congratulations. You're a squatty little RTA with an Ultim drip tip. Yeah, I don't know. Looks kinda cool. I kinda like the shape of that tank. Airflow is quite nice and smooth. Let's get a look at this deck real fast. Okay, yeah, that's a that's a thing. It's like an offset velocity style deck. Little places for your wicks to go. Looks like it's got bottom in airflow from the side. Cool. That's fine. That's a thing. That's a thing that we'll see a review someday. The M Manta. Manta RTA from Advokin. And of course, guys, if you see anything that I'm unboxing right now in this vape mail segment and you think like, wow, I'd actually like to see a review of that sooner rather than later, just let me know down below, man. I'm open to suggestions. I'm throwing my cue out the window and whatever I feel like reviewing is whatever I feel like reviewing these days. I spent two whole videos on that stupid micro cue that was just terrible, just awful, and I regret it. And I'm like, why did I do that? I didn't want to review that. I don't think anybody really had an interest in seeing me review that. So if there's anything that I unbox during this vape mail section, just let me know if you're like, I really want to see that Manta RTA really soon. Like, put that within like the next few weeks. I'll do my best, man. If you guys are interested in it, sure. I want to try it. I want to review it. I mean, it looks pretty cool. I know nothing about it. So I'm going in fresh, just like everybody else, man. Where did this come from? Greetings from Joy Tech. The Eki with Procore Motor Sample Kit was sent to you for the purpose of testing. Inspired by the automobile smart key, the Joy Tech Eki box. Aesthetically fits you hand comfortably, featuring 13 inch OLED screen, 1.3 inch OLED ski color display, an easy to go interface. What does that even mean, an easy to go interface? This compact starter mod is available in multiple attractive finishes, having a plenty of options for you to choose. The Pro C series heads are all compatible with the Procore motor atomizer. China, it, China's going off the rails, bro. China is just going straight off the rails. I can't even count how many different sub-ohm tanks and sub-ohm he tank head coil heads exist, and they all call them different things. Like, how many fucking coil heads does Smoke Tech have? Seriously, how many? Joy Tech has a bunch now. There's like the Pro Core, and apparently this is the Pro Motor, which is compatible with the Pro Core and the Pro Motor Core, and... Good God, man, just make a thing and sell it and have it be good. Sorry, I'm not I'm not here to rant about China. I get it, they're doing their own thing. It's whatever. I think we just need to stop, like just slow the fuck down a little bit, man. Can we go a week without releasing a new atomizer? Can we go a week without releasing four new mods? I have got, probably this month, I think I've got Five Joy Tech mods in the mail. Five this month. That's that's too many. That's too many. I get it that variety is the spice of life, man. But that's just too many. Oh, this I'm excited about. This I am actually, actually excited about. This is the Aura RDA from 
DJ LSB Vapes. They released, he released it through Digiflavor. This is the Aura, Aura RDA. Let's just take a quick look. We got time. Do we have time? Gasher, fuck it, we got time. We got time to at least open this. That means I can't open the very last package. I mean, I'm gonna open it, but we don't actually get to look at what the product looks like. Oh, crazy. It's got a peak insulator on the bottom. Whoa, that's cool, man. Yeah, there it is. It's, uh, the deck is very, very similar. It's kind of like a reversed, uh, remember the Crichton RDA, the Crichton RDA? It's kind of like that. It's like two little ledges. It's a two post. It's got airflow that comes up at it like this at a perfect angle. It just goes in and up at your coils. And I'm sure, 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 sure that this is squonk friendly, but honestly, I'm probably gonna be using it like a dripper. This is something I would actually like to set up. Oh, and it's got side airflow as well. Okay, all the airflow. Very clouds bro clouds. Let's just turn on the bottom airflow. Interesting. It feels a little bit uneven to me. I feel like I'm getting uh, less airflow out of one side. Let's uh, try to hold it by the 510. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting more air out of this side than this side. Yeah, definitely feels like that. Anyway, really excited about this. Really excited about the Aura RTA. And uh, yeah, we're gonna probably not gonna, I mean, we're probably not gonna set this up tonight, but it's gonna happen very, very soon. I'm gonna start testing this right away because I would love to get a video out for this. I know that there's a lot of people interested in this Aura RDA. If you're, are you interested in this Aura RDA that Daniel DJ LSB Vapes just dropped? Let me know down in the description because I wanna, I kinda wanna start using that right freaking away and just, uh, you know, maybe right after EC see knock out a review for that i think it'd be very cool very it'd be very cool to have daniel there what if i reviewed it at ecc with daniel sitting right next to me oh that could be cool okay finally the last a uh, package lots of yellow tape don't know who this is from i think i say the same thing every freaking time i open a package something green from Matofo. oh this is the flow tank okay this is their new tank this actually looks quite cool, and I know I said I wasn't gonna look at this, but it's just a little tank, so I'm, I think we have a little bit of time. Whoa, strange. What is going on in there? Why is there, why is there silicone in there? Why is there like a big silicone thing in there? I am uh, very, very confused. What is that? Why is there a big silicone thing in there? You see this big silicone thing? Why is that there? Why is that in there? <laughs> I am fascinated with this right now. Okay, let's open this up. Let's pull that out. What is it? Yeah, it's literally just a silicone thing. Why would you put that in a tank? Just to eliminate juice capacity completely? And it fits on here perfectly. Why? What the hell is happening? I wonder if that's just in there so that it protects it from breaking when it's shipping. <laughs> I feel like that could be a very logical thing as to why that's in there, because it makes no sense. Just a little tank, just a little coil head. Let's test out the airflow real fast. Feels uh, very restricted, very restricted lung hit. Okay, yeah, cool, all right. Well, there you go, flow tank. If anybody knows what this silicone thing is for, I have no idea. I'm assuming it was in there to protect it from make maybe breaking in transit because this packaging right here is very thin. It's very thin and flimsy and I have a feeling this could get crushed. Maybe this is to help protect it from being crushed. I don't know, I don't wanna throw it away because what if I need it later? Anyway, there you go, flow tank. We're gonna set that aside and yeah, that kind of represents the end of my vape mail opening. So, yep, I think the pipe three wins. Uh, I'm gonna get that set up. Okay, so I was sitting here editing the vlog and not quite sure what happened. The vape mail segment just ended with no resolution. So I'm here to say that, yeah, the vape mail section is over. And right now we're going to watch all the footage from Sweden. It's a little bit rough. Some of the audio eh, might be a little bit rough, but it's still badass. It turned out awesome. And I hope it gives you guys a sense of like what was going on there. So right now... It's time to enjoy Sweden. Bye, Schneeko. I miss you like crazy. Hey, what's up, everybody? I uh, hope you guys are enjoying the vlog. The, the following is just going to be, you know, a bunch of video uh, of fun times in Sweden. Uh, we're going to Sweden. We're going to hang out with Matthias and the Beyond Vape Europe uh, crew. Pickle's going to take We're me going to Sweden! She's not going I'm to not Sweden. going to Sweden. Pickle gets to take me to the airport to take Yay. me to Sweden, so I feel like that's almost like going to Sweden. It's better, because now we get a schnauzer -cation.
Schnauzercation. Anyway, um, let's do it to it. Airports are never uh, a whole lot of fun, but getting to chill out in the lounge, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, dude, Germany. Sweden? Well, I made it to Sweden, and I landed at night, which is a bummer, because Jess was telling me that it looks like a Bob Ross painting here, and, I'd, and I don't get to see any of it yet. But I'm in the back of someone's car. They just picked me up, I just got in. Just I'm not sure where I'm going, but uh, I'm gonna go, I don't know. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Dude, we made it to Sweden. Beautiful here. Yeah, it's beautiful that way too. Thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying Sweden so far. Literally all I've done is eat McDonald's and vape. But today we got big plans and I want you to see those big plans. So get excited. And yeah, shout out to Rig Mod for the beanie because it's fucking cold here. And I was always packing up. I was like, oh shit, I don't have a beanie. And then I remembered, <gasps> Rigmod sent me a beanie in July, and I can take that to Sweden and wear it in Sweden where it's gonna be cold. So everything works out. Everything always works out. Anyway, let's just see what today has in store for us. This is our hotel. Sorry if the audio is bad, but it is a GoPro after all. It's actually like warm in the sun right now. Might not need the battle vest. I mean, come on, how can I not wear the battle vest though? Anyway, um, I just came outside to do some to do some vapping. It's too windy out here to talk, but uh, hopefully I'm gonna be getting a lot of dope footage of Sweden, the people that we meet, the times that we have here in, in Sweden. I can't name the name of the town we're in. I know where I flew into Gothenburg, and I can't pronounce the name of the town we're in. I should probably learn that before I leave. Too windy. You wanna say hi to my subscribers, Matthias? Hi, hi, hi. Everybody, this is Matthias. No. He's, he's great. No. Look at this shirt. He's so cool. Do you want to say hi, Jess? Not that close. All my subscribers know who you are. What's up? I love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah, it's recording. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. GoPro, stop recording. Matthias keeps turning off my camera. Matthias has a cool office. The monkey and a honey badger. Is that a honey badger? Honey badger. Don't give a Full oh, cool shit, and then of course just beautiful oh, lake, mountains, beautiful clouds outside your window. I'm moving in, Matthias. Oh, uh, you're welcome. Okay, I'm moving in. What's Valhalla? That's where you go when you die if you're a Viking. Crooked moon tattoo. So much cool shit. Yeah, we're in Matthias's uh, office, Beyond Vape. Dot S E. Tons of cool shit on the walls. Tattoo stuff on the walls. Warehouse full. Of Stuff, other things, vinyl, other things, just because you need the anatomical monkey skeleton. Plus he has Kiss Dress to Kill on vinyl. That's amazing. That's my favorite thing I've seen this whole trip so far in Sweden. <laughs> what is it? It's Valhalla. What are you drinking? Why are you drinking so early in the morning? Because I wanted to try it. Okay. It's not early, it's like three. Back in America, it's like three in the afternoon. Yeah. No, what time is it in America? Like 4 a.m.? Yeah. What am I drinking out of a skull? Valhalla? That's where Vikings go when they die in glorious battle. Mmm. <laughs> Made my feet warm. Is that normal? <laughs> okay. Sometimes you drink Valhalla out of a skull. GoPro, stop recording. Mmm. 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 <laughs> Oh, that's really good. Sometimes you go to Sweden and you just hang out in a parking lot and drink beer. That's basically what we decided. Yes! Perfect. <laughs> Matthias, you have to explain to my subscribers where we are. In what we're doing. Sweden. We're, we're in, in Sweden. We're in Fjärdås. Um, Fjärdås. At the Odd Island Brewery. Odd Island Brewing. Yeah. 
Okay. And, and we're gonna watch, look at beer. Yeah. Okay. A lot of beer. A yeah, lot, lot of beer? Yeah. yeah. We're gonna look at a lot of beer. Yeah. Who's making the beer? I don't know who's making the beer. The drummer of... In Flames. Am I recording? Yeah. Oats. <laughs> it smells oaty. It smells like when my dad used to drink beer. Oh, really? It's like a, it's like a musty. Yeah, I think it's. It's like a musty hoppy flavor smell. Catch me. <laughs> How's the smell, Matthias? Good? Yeah, different. It's a mess. Ew. Where are we going now, Matthias? We're going to the restaurant 2112. It's called 2112? Yeah. In Gothenburg, Sweden? Yeah. All right. What the hell? It's messed up. There's a pug on a skateboard outside. Well, you can't see it, but that's Lemmy. Honey Cash, obviously. Other things. Van Halen. Camels. Yes. Uh, nice. It's recording? Yeah, if you say that, it starts recording. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Am I in the vlog? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Nick's taking a tinkle. So I stole his GoPro. Oh, he's coming. Let's go. No, he's not. I gotta run. Oh, fuck. He's gonna get me, dude. <laughs> Why did you steal that? I mean, thank you for grabbing it. Yeah. That's what I meant to say. Okay, question of the day. Do you say kooky? Is no, it something... nobody says kooky. Is it something only old people say, or can everyone say kooky? It's only something Jess says. <laughs> GoPro, stop recording. Well shit, man. That was kind of an unbelievable first day in Sweden. I'm only here for two more days, but we did a lot today. Uh, we met up with some of Matthias's crew from his company, as well as Beyond Vape Sweden. We went to the drummer of In Flames Brewery, helped him brew beer, drank his beer, right out of the big vat. It, it was delicious. We hung out, we talked metal, we talked beer, unbelievable. Then we went to a, a restaurant that the guitar player of In Flames owns in Gothenburg, Sweden. Um, it's called 212, uh, 2112 after the Rush album. A great restaurant. The soundtrack was the helicopters all night. Pictures of rock guys all over the walls and cool paintings of like Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson and all these great musicians and uh, yeah, it was unreal, man. We had, it was a really fucking cool first day. And uh, tomorrow, um, I hope I got enough footage of today. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But tomorrow is uh, kind of a lazy day. We're going to go to a music festival, and I get to see one of my other favorite Swedish bands, uh, Mustache, tomorrow. I know. It's weird, but look for them. Mustache, band, Sweden. That's what you have to Google. Mustache band Sweden. You can listen to them. Also, the creator of the Crisp 461, that juice that I really, really love, gave me the last two bottles of his current run before the next current, you know, the next run comes out. I got, like, the last two bottles of it. Amazing. An amazing juice. It's been an amazing day with amazing people and amazing, amazing, amazing. Sweden is, um, Sweden's magical, man. All you vapors that watch this and you live in Sweden, embrace it and and grow the vape scene here because everybody's so nice. Uh, there's there's great vapors and there's just needs to be a, a bigger scene here. And so I would encourage any vapors in Sweden to just get into it, start vape things, meets, events. Uh, you know, Facebook groups and, and hang out and vape and be a community because you guys live in one of the greatest countries that I've honestly ever been to uh, in my life. So there you go. Had a great day today. And yeah, there'll be much more tomorrow. You guys don't even worry about it. Well, huh. this is what happens when you're in Sweden and your entire second day is literally just rain. It's rain, it's rain everywhere. It's raining like crazy. It's raining. 
you know, standing under this overhang so that I can vape. And you know, it's raining. I brought the dead rabbit with me, by the way. This is fucking great. My drip tip's coming off. Yeah, dude. Dead rabbit. Also, lots and lots of rain. The thing is, we were supposed to go to an outdoor music festival. <laughs> and I, that's not going to happen today. So, I've been laying in my hotel room watching uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Just picked up that show. First episode today. Pretty funny. Thoughts? I'm not doing nothing right now. So, looks like I get a rainy day in Sweden. Hey, that's cool. Well, I'm without my uh, GoPro, but a smartphone is a vlogger's best friend. We're getting food. I'll give you money if you can understand that menu. I've never felt so out of place, like, don't speak any, any Swedish at all. And luckily, everybody in Sweden speaks a little bit of English, but it's good times. Oh, there's Jess, too. Yeah. Nerd. Me? This is uh, Matthias hand built this entire bar, this entire room, bare hands, no tools or nothing. It was just, he had an ax and that's it. And he built this whole thing, all this up here, all this. He painted that sign, tattoo, built this refrigerator, painted all these stickers himself. He's, I mean, he's, it's, he's impressive, you know, but it's cool. And this is where the event's gonna be tomorrow. And it's so cool. It's a cool bar and we can vape in here. Right, Jess? <laughs> Good. Woman of few words, or none at all. So these are good. These, uh, it's kind of like taking a spoonful of salt and just jamming it in your mouth and then smelling licorice while you do that. Need, That's how I would describe these. You need to try these as well. What's this one? This is like a- How do you say it? Doomla snacks. Doomla snacks. Doomla snacks, yeah. Doomla. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, really good. These are legit. Oh man! Well, after watching some rock and roll, Bombus and mustache. Yeah. We're just hanging out in a trailer with these dudes. What's up, dudes? What's up? Hello. You know, Jess, Matthias, these guys. They're letting us hang out. We're trying juices and drinking beer. Okay, now's your chance, Matthias. Be in the vlog. Yeah. Blow some dope ass clouds. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Clouds, oh, bro. bro. Is that how we, <laughs> yeah. That's how we represent Sweden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now let's have a proper cloud. See, see, that was a hundred times better than Matthias's cloud. There we go. Clouds, bro. It's like we're back in California. Oh. <laughs> uh, see, now it's too much. We're just lost in white. Well, it's bitching. Tomorrow's the event, so we'll see you guys then. Well, it's another rainy day here in Sweden, but. It's still beautiful, and today, well, today is vape event day. Did you film it? Why Grim Green? Stock footage for like a music montage, you know? So there's like music playing in the background, and it's like, oh, 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 no. Yeah, 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 oh, kind of, uh, kind of. <laughs> it's fine. I messed it up so bad, though. Uh, it's okay. I'm happy about it. Yeah. Really happy about it. Well, as long as you're happy, I'm happy for you. Oh, yeah, look at this fanciness. It's so smooth. 
it's like it's like what uh, what's it called in English? Type? Teflon. 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 So you can scratch it and stuff like that. But you don't have it. This isn't a squonk, is it? Yeah, it's a it's a good one, but it's not a squonk. Is it really? Yeah, it has a squonk pin. So I didn't know that was a thing. And do you see what kind of grip tip is on it? DHD. Yeah. The only one that matters. Oh, that's good. What yeah. juice is this? It's this one. Okay. You got that. I'm making a mental note right now. That's a good one. Here, that's too expensive for me to <laughs> fiddle with right now. How do you feel, Nick? Great! That's awesome. How do you feel, Matthias? Good. Yeah. I might post this on Instagram. Yeah, that's totally cool. <laughs> Let's share it around. Nick said on the chopping block. Yeah, exactly. Well, so yeah, I mean... It's a great time in Sweden, man. Unbelievable. I love this country. I love the people. I love the vaping community. This is one of the funnest events I've ever been to, and it was just a bunch of people fucking hanging out in a parking lot, listening to metal and vaping, and I loved it. Also, I met this guy. Uh, the yeah, fucked up guy from Yeah, the Sweden. fucked up guy from Sweden. We yeah. were dancing earlier. Yeah. Bro. You make your lunch. We, we were making love on the dance floor is what yeah. we were doing. That's what was happening. Man. Yeah. But I want to buy a snus. No. I this can't do that. Shit. I know. I, I know. I know. I'm too I can, I'm not a snus. I'm not snus enough to snus that snus. Snuff. snuff? In snus? English word. It's snuff. snuff. Oh it's snuff. snuff. Okay. Yeah. What are you gonna do? But Enjoy uh, though. In Sweden, it's More for snus. you. More for you. More for me. Yeah. <laughs> It looks it's like shit. <laughs> it does. It's like you're packing manure in your mouth. It's okay. Yeah, you could have said it better. <laughs> what the fuck, bitch? Shit. So yeah, we're basically done. Uh, Matthias, yeah. he did this whole thing, man. He put it all on. It was so fun. He's got a cool bar, cool bands, cool people. How do you feel about it? Successful? It was successful. Successful. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really satisfied. Are you relieved now that it's over? Yeah. And you can go home and sleep? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Right well, now. my bad. Thanks for having me, Matthias. Thank you. I appreciate it. I love Sweden, and I'm going to come back whenever you want me to. Next year. Next year, I'm going to come back, and we'll rock out again. I'm probably going to come to the next Yeah, yeah, come to the next of yeah, we're getting a big Airbnb. So yeah, Matthias, Sweden, represent an ECC. We might have to share a bed. Ah, that guy. Anyway, yeah, dude, Sweden was amazing, and uh, I don't even know what else I can say. It's been a, a wonderful time. Sweden's magical, and uh, I'm so glad I came. So glad I came. Anyway, back to it. Next up, I don't know, ECC. So yeah, needless to say, uh, Sweden was a really, really good time. I had a stellar, stellar time over there. And I just want to reiterate something. And I said this on Instagram, and I think I've said this on other social media as well. Um, Sweden is a wonderful place with a lot of really great people that are just living their lives and doing the best they can. You're going to see a lot of shit on the news. People were telling me, oh, I would never go to Western Europe right now or Eastern Europe. Are you kidding me? They have such problems with immigration and there's all these refugees there and they're attacking locals and there's, you know, there's these zones that you can't go into and being over there, none of that exists. Being in Sweden gave me a really unique, interesting perspective on the United States and our place like on the world stage and seeing, coming home and seeing news about Sweden and I'm, I was just there and that's, that's not going on. Sweden isn't what you think. So just again, the, the public news media, and I hate to sound like Alex Jones here, Obama's the devil. I hate to sound like Alex Jones here, but a lot of the mainstream media is just feeding you horse shit. Don't trust it. Don't trust what they say. If you hear something about Sweden, don't believe it until you go to Sweden and see for yourself. But anyway, enough with that rant. We're going to retro vape. Does anybody remember this tank? Can anybody name this tank? And be honest, if you name this tank before I say it in the comments, then just let me know. Okay, you're gonna have to, you okay? Does anybody know what this tank is? Ah, it's the Mew Tank. Does anybody remember the Mew Tank from Indulgence? This was 
one of my favorite RTAs, and I dug this out. I remember giving this a glowing, glowing review. I put hearts on the thumbnails. I was just head over heels in love with this RTA, and I thought I'd break it back out again, wick it up, build it, and wick it, and fill it up, and, and see how it still holds up. The first thing I noticed is compared to some modern tanks, like this little squatty guy, look how fucking tall this thing is. It's a 22 millimeter tank that is, I mean, that is a tall, tall tank. It has orange O-rings on it, so I decided I'm gonna put it on my Minikin Reborn, maybe get a little matchy-matchy, black and orange and black and orange. That looks pretty cool. I'm gonna take this apart right now. I literally just grabbed this out of that shelf back there. And I'm gonna take, that's right, the AFC comes off the bottom. That's interesting. I wonder why that's a thing. Okay, whatever, the AFC comes off, no big deal. Let me open this up. I actually might still even have a build in here that would be cool oh yeah look at that I got some twisted wire in here wonder what the resistance is on here let's let's glow shit yeah there goes the AFC still going still going farther and farther away it's not done yet you can hear it it's still going it's going clear across my whole bedroom this is like a fucking world record right now you guys Oh, finally it stops by the guitar. Okay, good lord. That was like a good six feet that that rolled. Anyway, let me get it real fast. All right, let's see what these coils were at. Wow, 0. 0.42. Twisted wire. I got this set to 60 watts. Are these going to glow evenly? Holy crap, just glowing evenly right out of the gate. How great is that? I have a lot of RDAs and RTAs that I have kept around. Like, of course, I'm going to keep the Mew tank around because I'm revisiting it now. In another two years, I'll probably revisit it again. These are just products that I loved, that I kept around, and basically for the purpose of this retro vaping segment. But it's glowing nice and evenly. Here's the chimney. Oh yeah, those silicone things. Okay, so these had to stay on the tank, if I remember correctly. These had to stay on here. And then you got your chimney right here that, yep, that comes off. It's not a two-piece chimney, so you can't do the troll doll wicking technique. But, you know, I remember it being still easy to wick. I remember it being really easy to wick. And I remember the vape I got from this was stellar, really good vape. It has a top fill system, which I cannot get open right now. I'm gonna need some tools. It's been sitting too long. That's, I'm assuming it's been sitting too long. There we go. Okay, let's not screw that down so hard next time, Nick. Anyway, what I need to do real quick is I'm just gonna wick this like I remember wicking it. In fact, I'm probably gonna go watch my old Mutank video to see how I wicked this the first time because I want it to vape really well. I'm gonna be filling it up with Boilermaker Anvil, which is, I think these are still 50-50 juices, although this one looks a lot thicker, but Boilermaker Vapor has been around forever. I really like their flavors, and Doug was nice enough to send me a couple bottles of the new stuff, and this is Anvil. It's delicious. What's the flavor profile on it? Uh, uh, dense caramel and sweet cream foundation wields a savory, rich, palate-pleasing flavor that will make you feel reborn. Oh, a lot of promises here from Boilermaker. Yeah, that is a good flavor. That is a fucking delicious flavor. All right, so let's wick this real fast. I'll be right back. I'm going to wick this, juice this, fill this, and then we're going to vape it. So yeah, it remains very easy to wick. I, I really like this deck. There's huge channels for your cotton. You literally just bend your cotton down and stuff them into these little channels. They don't pop out or anything, and... Oh, the vapors are happening. So let's screw this chimney down. I, yep, still easy to wick. Easy to wick. You just screw this down. Man, this was a good RTA. This was a good RTA. That glass goes on. Then the chimney goes on like this. Oh, we are almost in business, man. And you got your kidney-shaped holes at the top, so I'm just gonna jam the bottle in here. Bleh, fill it up. Boom, roasted, just like that. Then this screws down. I'm trying not to screw this down too tight. I don't want it to be too tight because I want to be able to take it off later. Drip tip goes in. A little bit slurpy in there. But I think I can vape through that initially. Let's just try this. Okay, it lowered down to 0.34 after I got them glowing really evenly. So I'm going to leave this at 60 watts. Let's have a try. This is a Boilermaker Anvil in the Mew tank. And this tank is only about a year old. I reviewed this in 2016. But it is... Oh, wait. Am I leaking? Oh, I'm totally leaking. Watch. See all that juice coming out of the, coming out of the airflow? Yeah. Could be that this juice is just too damn thin. But... 
While we have it, let's give it a couple tries. Um, this juice, I believe, is a 50-50 juice, and uh, maybe it's just not meant for the Mew tank. Maybe you're not long for this world, Boilermaker Anvil. Let's try to give it a few vapes over the trash can. Dude, <laughs> that's rad. Really good flavor, really good flavor on this Mew Tank, man. And I don't know what it is. It's like the small chamber, it's like the small chimney. Just makes for really great flavor. Meanwhile, I got juice coming out of the out of the airflow holes. This leaking is 100% about this juice. I forgot that Boilermaker is a 50-50 and I think these new bottles are even still 50-50 and it's just a little bit too thick. Thin. It's just a little bit too thin of a juice. If I had packed a little bit more cotton in there, it might have worked out a little bit better. These are only two and a half millimeter coils, and I think if I had some three millimeter coils in there and packed it with a little bit more cotton, then this juice would have worked very, very well. But I'm having it leak over a trash can while I vape it. Still vapes, and the flavor is great, and the anvil juice from Boilermaker is fucking delicious. What? Oh, I forgot how good this tank is. Fuck, this tank is good. I'm telling you guys, if you want a really good RTA, the Mew Tank, if you can get around how tall it is, is still a really fucking legit RTA. Easy to build, easy to wick, the flavor is stellar, the airflow, oh, the airflow is so smooth, and my vape feels so saturated and just warm and flavorful goodness. Unreal. I'm gonna take my trash can and my Mew tank. I'm just gonna vape for a little bit, okay? Hope that's okay. Okay, the verdict's in. Mew tank is still rocking, still kicking ass. In fact, I'm gonna clean this and I'm gonna use a different juice in here so that it doesn't leak because I really wanna keep vaping this tank. It's good. Oh man, it's good. I forgot how good this is. Seriously, you could probably find the Mew Tank here. Let's do some Google Foo. Uh, I don't want you to leak, so I'm gonna hold one hand over the trash can holding the mod, and I'm gonna attempt to Google Foo with one hand. Mew Tank RTA, go. Oh, it's out of stock. Shit, it's out of stock there. It's gotta be in stock somewhere, man. Vape NW, don't let me down, bro. Oh no, they don't have it in stock. Either. Ooh, it looks like Origin Vape has it out of stock. You know what? Let's just look at Fast Tech. Come on, what are we doing? We know it's gonna be at Fast Tech, right? Uh, no, Fast Tech. Wow, it's not in stock on Fast Tech. Shit. Well, I don't know where you can find this. Use your Google Foo and try to track down a Mew Tank. If you want something from about a year ago, it's not exactly retro, it's not exactly like vintage, but tanks have come such a long way in such a short amount of time that even looking at this, it just looks old. It looks like an old product, you know what I mean? It doesn't look like any of the new tanks, but god damn it, you are still a really good vape, Mr. Mew Tank. Really good. I can't get over it. It's so good. Yeah, I'm definitely going to rinse this out, and I'm going to take this with me to ECC for sure. Okay, now just don't leak on my desk, okay? Just, just sit there and don't leak on my desk. Anyway, yeah, that was retro vaping. Good times. If you have any old gear that you know that I have, or maybe that you had that was one of your favorites, or something that I liked, like an old review, let me know. I'm all about revisiting old stuff that I used to really love. But anyway, let's wrap up that retro vaping segment, and let's jump right into some viewer mail. All right, so William writes in and says, uh, hey, Nick, <coughs> that coughing's not in the email. I just wanted to clarify that. William wasn't coughing when he emailed me, and if he was, why would he type it? That, that's just weird. You're weird. Hi, Nick, my name is William, and I have a low RX2 slash three, and the mod itself tends to heat up in my hand as I use it. I was wondering if this has ever happened to you, and why does it happen? I'm assuming it's because of the batteries, and I, wanna, uh, and I just wanted to know if something I should be concerned about. Thank you for everything you do. I have been vaping on and off cigarettes now for two years. Keep on vaping. Also, feel free to use this uh, in a video. Feel free to use my name. Yeah, absolutely. So, mods get warm. 
Some some mods just get warm. Um, this one right here, this Evoke, is a perfect example. When I start vaping it and vaping it and vaping it, the atomizer is hot. The atomizer is creating heat. And with that atomizer deck, directly touching your mod, it's going to, you know, make your mod warm. Nine times out of 10, if your mod is warm to the touch, it's because your atomizer is warm and it's warming up your mod. And a good way to test this is just pop your batteries out. Pop your batteries out, and if your battery is warm, then it might be something with your batteries. You might be overexerting your batteries, but generally, if my mod is warm, it's around where the 510 is, maybe down the face plate a little bit from holding it. But if I pop out the batteries and they're usually cool to the touch, test them against your face and they feel cool to the touch, then it's probably not your batteries. It's probably your atomizer getting warm, which they do. That's their job is to get warm, making your mod a little bit warm. It happens on some mods more than others, depending on what materials they use and whether or not it's painted or anodized. My Minikin is painted with a thick paint and it's got a rubberized coating on the back. So this one doesn't tend to get really warm, but my Rolo, my Rolo R. RX200 and the DNA200. Remember when Wismec released a DNA200? Yeah, those mods, yeah, those those used to get warm on me. Um, more recently, what mod used to get warm on me? All, it's, 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 it's stainless steel mods. The stainless steel mods get warm on me. Mech mods get warm on me a lot, and I'm always really careful with mech mods. I pop that battery out a lot and hold it against my face and make sure that my battery's still in good condition, but when you have a hot, hot atomizer with like a hot build on it, Titans, that's what used to get really hot on me the titans because i was running a series titan so eight volts on like a 0.5 ohm coil it just makes everything hot your atomizer gets hot your mod gets hot everything gets hot i wouldn't really worry about it as long as you're doing those battery checks if you feel your mod getting warm when you're not using it then that is a very very bad dangerous possibly dangerous situation and you're going to want to get those batteries out of the mod but if you're vaping it and vaping it and vaping it yeah atomizer makes the mod warm anyway thank you so much for writing in william uh i got a i got a uh, email here from Luke. Luke writes in and says, Hey Nick, I wonder if you can settle an argument I'm having with my friend. When you started your last vlog when you were sitting on the couch, we noticed you had some cool Star Wars cushions. We also noticed a mystery cushion. On said cushion is what I believe to be Barry Manilow. My friend says it's not, but it's hard to see, so... Who's right? If I'm correct and it is Ma and it is Manilow, are you a closet fan? Thanks, Luke. P.S. Keep up the great work. Uh, I'm a longtime fan from England. Oh, and you can use my name. Cheers. Yeah, absolutely, Luke. So are you ready? Are we ready to settle this debate? I feel like there should be more writing on this. Like, did he promise you like a mod or is this like a gentleman's agreement or did you bet money on it? Uh, I don't know. Let's find out. Yep, you are correct. That is absolutely Barry Manilow because I wanted to Barry Manilow pillow. That's not actually the story. Um, back when Casey and I, uh, Casey the Pickle, Casey and I first started dating, um, she is an insane Barry Manilow fan. Like, huge Barry Manilow fan. She is a fanalow to the core. She went and saw Barry Manilow last year. She's just a big Barry Manilow fan. And so I thought, hey, how cool would it be to have a pillow printed with Barry Manilow on it? So I gave this to her as a gift. And it used to be on our, our couch, like our living room couch. And then it uh, it made its way into my office because I like it. Because we call it Barry Mana Pillow. But yeah, you are correct. Your friend is really, really wrong. Feel free to rub it in his face. Yes, this is a Barry Manilow pillow. I also have a hedgehog wearing sunglasses playing a keyboard that I picked up at Ikea because why would you pass this pillow and not buy it? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, Luke, thanks for uh, thanks for writing in. Got another guy here who calls himself White Bread. Uh, he says, how's it going, buddy? First off, love the work and everything you do. I hope I get to meet you one day, shake your hand, and give you much thanks. Uh, being appreciated for giving the vape community uh, and us a a small fries a voice yes anyways i just started getting into mechs a bit and i was looking into ohm's law uh so all in all i have a question what do you recommend to build on a single 18650 hybrid mech that would also vape great i'm also using lg he4 and sony vtc 5s what do you recommend for the lg and the sony's i did a 0.2 and it seems like it's not there with the clouds and also a 0.14 and the clouds were great but the battery life maybe 10 pulls and you're done ha 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 not so good on battery life 
So should I find a happy medium between the two? I would just like your opinion and what you would use and what it would amount to. Thank you very much. I uh, hope to hear back from you soon. Thanks for everything you do. And you're absolutely the best in my opinion. We look forward to meeting you someday. Yeah, absolutely, bro. Absolutely. I don't know where you're from, Mr. Whitebread, but absolutely. If you see me, if you meet me, just absolutely come up and say hi, shake my hand, give me a hug. Um, do that thing where you walk up and like, touch this shoulder and I turn around and you're over here like, ah, like that's, that's a fun thing to do. And now everybody's going to do that thing. Okay. Don't, 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 don't do that thing where you tap me on the shoulder and I turn around and you're over here like, ah, so yeah, listen, I, I build, uh, I build, uh, pretty low on mech mods on single 18650 mech mods. I'm right around there. I'm like at a 0 0.14, 0 0.12. And that's just the way that I like to vape it. And the thing is, if you want a warmer vape on a mech, you're going to have less battery life. And if you want a cooler vape on a mech, you're going to have more battery life. That's just, I mean, that's, that's something you can't fight against. If you want a hotter, more clouds, bro clouds type of vape on a mech mod, you're going to be sacrificing battery life. So 0 0.14, 0 0.12. Sure. I mean, I've built some danger builds before where I go down to like a 0 0.09, a 0 0.08 on a single 18650. And I never feel really good about that. That setup is never like my daily banger. That's something I use very briefly at my desk. And here's what I do. God's honest truth. This is a 0.08 in here. And if I'm vaping it and vaping it and vaping it, when I'm done, I will unscrew the bottom like this. And I will oftentimes just pull the battery out completely because a 0.08 yeah, that's low. That's low for any single 18650. I use the Sony VTC5s as well as the Samsung 25Rs. So, you know, just build safe for your batteries. But if you want hotter vapor, and I don't know why I repeat myself. I'm repeating myself again. But yeah, you're going to sacrifice battery life for having a little bit more uh, warmer vapor and clouds bro clouds. White bread, that's that's unfortunately uh, just the way it goes. I would uh, suggest looking at like a dual parallel 18650 mod, like this evoke i feel completely safe building like a 0.09 on here and running it on a dual parallel and it's it's kind of mechy i guess but it's not exactly tube tube mechy anyway thank you so much for writing in how much time do we have i got some time to do one more at least one more there was one i really wanted to get to well i can't find the exact one i wanted to get to but this one's a pretty interesting one from K kieran kieran K-I-E-R-A-N. Kieran, I hope I'm saying that right. Sup, dude, my name's Kieran from the UK. I've been vaping around two years now, and I feel like I've gained so much knowledge and understanding of the industry, and I would love to actually work in the industry. With the new TPD shit that's going down here in England, I feel like it's a hard time for all vaping companies here. My local shop is like family to me, and I would love to be able to work somewhere in the industry because I feel like I'd really be able to shine. My question is, when did you realize that vaping was what you wanted to do for a living or as a job and it wasn't just going to be a hobby of yours. I'd love to hear your story. I'm sorry if you've already covered this, but I'm a relatively new sub and I love what you're doing, bro. Big love from the UK. Thanks a bunch. Please feel free to use my name and shit in the video if this makes it into a vlog. Guess what, Kieran? It made it into a vlog. So here's the thing. Um, I didn't realize that I wanted to do vaping full time until I did it full time, if that makes any sense. Um, I had been working at Starbucks for a very, very long time. And I was very, very dedicated to Starbucks. And I loved my job. And I loved the people I worked with. And I liked going into the roasting room and roasting coffee all night long while listening to Pandora radio and joking and, you know, messing around with my friends at work. I loved it. And at that time, up into up to and including like most of 2014, um, vaping was my side thing. Starbucks was my main thing. And vaping was like my side thing. And the industry kept growing and I kept dedicating more and more time to it. And there was a time probably six to nine months in 2014 where I was working 12 hour graveyard shifts and then I would get off work come home and do grim green stuff. I would shoot and edit videos. I would answer emails. I would answer comments. I would work on some Namber juice stuff. I would sleep. I would go back to work, work 12 hours all night long. The next morning, get home, continue working on grim green stuff, continue working on Namber juice stuff. And it came to a point in my head where I was thinking, look, Nick, if you're really going to do this, if you're really going to dive into the vape community with both feet, you're going to have to quit your job. And that is the scariest conclusion that I have ever come to in my entire life. And I knew that if I didn't do this, that I 
I would definitely regret it for literally the rest of my life. I was talking to people at ECC and there was one gentleman in particular who really inspired me and I wish I could remember his name or what company he worked for, but he passed by me and our conversation was so brief and this was ECC three years ago. So this was ECC 2014. And I was talking to a guy at the Namber Juice table and he said, yeah, I just quit my job to run my liquid company full time. And I remember thinking, that is, you're crazy. That is crazy. Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Why would you give up a steady paycheck just to do this vaping thing full time? And then I started really thinking about it and I thought, I wanna do vaping full time, but I'm really too scared to quit my job. And so it, it just came to a head at the end of 2014 and I was like, you know what? I am going to make an honest effort to do this full time. Up until this exact moment, it has been a side project for me. It's been a side thing. It's been a it's been a hobby and I have to quit my job and I have to do vaping full time. And even thinking about it now terrifies me a little bit. I knew that I would regret it and one day I quit my job. I started doing vaping full time. I moved to Southern California and I started doing vaping full time. And that was three years ago. And it was literally that exact moment where I knew that I wanted to do vaping full time. And it's amazing how much you can focus on the things you love when you don't have the distractions of a job. I was spending 12 hours a night at my job. That's 12 hours that I could have been spending working on Grim Green, making my intros better, making my videos better, you know, learning how to edit things, learning Photoshop better, you know, reaching out to contacts and, and, and making revenue streams and doing this, that, and the other. I was able to finally focus on my, on my dream, like on my passion of vaping without the distraction of a job. So long story short, to answer your question, I didn't know I wanted to do it until I did it. And once I did it, I can't imagine doing anything else. And I have a feeling that there's a lot of people out there that are like that and people that like, they, they love, uh, let's say being a musician and you're in a band and like you work your day job and then on the weekends you do shows, but you really wanna be a full-time musician, you know what I mean? But you keep going back to your day job and then you, you do your shows on the weekends. I have the feeling that there would be a lot more successful musicians and artists and bands. There's if they weren't doing their jobs, you know what I mean? It don't, if you're not distracted by a full-time job, if you're not distracted by going to work and making money for somebody else, you can focus on making money for yourself. Nothing will make you focus on your dream more than just focusing on your dream. And I'm not trying to get all like Tony Robbins or Gary Vee on you right here, but seriously, nothing will make you focus on your dream like completely focusing on your dream, putting all of your time, all of your energy, all of your effort into your dream. And I gotta tell you, I have never worked harder in my life, but it is this, it is seriously the most satisfying and rewarding work I have ever done. If I am awake, I am working, and when I'm working, I feel good. So there you go. You won't know until you know. Um, sometimes you just have to step out of your comfort zone and and just do it, just do it, just execute, just, just make it happen. I promise you can do it. If I can do it, someone that didn't go to college, that barely graduated high school, that only had weird jobs like 7-Eleven in a golf course and a ski shop my whole life, if I can do it, dude, there's a lot of people out there that can do it, trust me. Anyway, Kieran, sorry that was so long, but I hope you found it a little bit useful. If anybody else out there has any uh, viewer mails, just feel free to send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject line, viewer mail. It will get read, it will get filed accordingly, and it could possibly get read on the vlog. I actually have a whole fuck ton of viewer mails right now that I do need to get through. Maybe I might do an all viewer mail spectacular on the vlog like we do in the podcast. I think that would be a pretty good way to get through some of these, but I'm always open to more viewer mails. Hit me up, nick at grimgreen.com. Anyway, what's next? What are we up to next here in the vlog? Oh, that's right. We're gonna taste some juice.
Okay, cool. So this week's juice comes from NorthShoreVapor.com. This is North Shore Vape Distribution, and they have a juice called Dat Sugar Cookie Dough. And even just looking at the picture of this on here, which, by the way, um, in the future, uh, under the e deeming regulations, under the FDA, um, pictures like this on boxes or bottles is totally, totally not, not, not allowed. That's how strict they're being with packaging. So when you see things and it's like, oh, that's a spoof of Sour Patch Kids, I get it, or that's a play on this, or look at all these colorful pictures, and look, there's a girl vaping, and then the cookies, and then there's cookies on the bottle. Nope. <laughs> Fucking none of that is going to be allowed. That's how strict they're being on this. But, thankfully, they do have a big warning on there. Warning, this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an inductive chemical. That is absolutely accurate. Hoping this is good. Thank God. Chubby Gorilla the bottle. I was really nervous that there was going to be a uh, sriracha tipped bottle on there. But anyway, it's called Dat Sugar Cookie Dough, 70% VG, 3 milligram. Really interested to try this out. Let's give it a smell test if we might. Don't smell anything. Let's give this a knuckle test if we might. Yeah, wow, okay. Uh, I have a feeling there is a kind of like a mountain of sweetener in here. Anyway, I am vaping this on the TVL 5 ring uh, single 18650 mech mod, and this is the Apocalypse RDA, uh, you know, from Apocalypse Vapor. Great, great RDA. Um, I'm just gonna load this up. I freshly re wicked this this afternoon. I'm just gonna load this up. We're gonna vape it, we're gonna taste it. God, I love drippers. I love drippers so much. Yep, let's see. The vapors are happening. All right, so here we go. First toot on that sugar cookie dough. Okay. It's sweet. It definitely tastes like a sugar cookie. It tastes like a sugar cookie with frosting on it. I feel like there's a weird flavor in here that's not quite gelling with me, man. Let me just uh, pause for a second. I'm gonna take a whole mess of toots and I'm gonna come back and talk about how this juice tastes. All right, so that sugar cookie dough, it's a little bit on the throaty side. Throaty. <coughs> it feels throaty every time I vape it. It feels throaty. And I know throaty is a hard thing to explain and it's different from throat hit. When I get a throat hit like off of 18 milligram, mm, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel it in the back of my throat and then it fades away. With a throaty juice, I'll take like two big rips on it and it'll be lingering. It'll feel very throaty. And that's kind of a negative attribute for me. Um, it happens from just flavorings. There's certain flavorings that hit me weird and make, make it a little bit throaty. It is still pretty delicious, but I figured out what the weird component is. And I just wanna say it does taste like a sugar cookie with frosting, but there's something I tasted in this and I feel bad saying this because they were nice enough to send me this juice, but I get a hint of Play-Doh. I get a little bit of like a Play-Doh, type of thing. Not the way Play-Doh tastes. It's not Poseidon's salty asshole in your mouth. Like the way Play-Doh smells, like that, that mushy clay Play-Doh smell, that's the flavor that I get out of this. It's not overwhelming, but it's there. And once I tasted it, I, I can't untaste it. All I taste is like a sugar cookie with frosting and then like a little dollop of Play-Doh on top. But how rocking is this atomizer right now, dude? This setup is killing it. Yeah, Play-Doh. I'm sorry, that sugar cookie, but it is Play-Doh. You know what? They have another juice that is uh, something else. I'll try the other juice next week, okay? It's not that sugar cookie. It's the other one. What's the other one? Here, let me put, I'm going to put the link for the dat sugar cookie in the description, but they have another one called dat cake batter dough, and I'm hoping that that doesn't have the uh, the Play-Doh, but we'll taste that next week. How about that? Well, I'll, you can all taste the same thing. If anybody wants to buy a bottle of that sugar, of that cake batter dough from North Shore Vape Distribution, if you're feeling spendy and you want to taste some juice with me, 25 bucks. And you have to promise that you're not going to taste it until we taste it together. That's, that's the whole point of this. But we'll taste the other one next week. We'll taste that cake batter dough. Unfortunately, that sugar cookie dough it's falling a little bit short, and it kind of tastes like Play-Doh, which is a huge bummer. So yeah, I think it's time to wrap up this here vlog, and we're going to end it with your and my favorite segment. That's right, it's favorite comments of the week time. 
There were some pretty good ones this week. Um, first comment of the week, number one. Uh, this was someone, Andrew had posted this in the Namber Juice group. He said, here you go. Aegis. E- Aegis? Aegis? Aegis. I still don't know how to pronounce it. Aegis? He gave me the... Remember there was that uh, the mod, the Aegis mod that I didn't know how to pronounce. I think it's called Aegis. Aegis. E-J-I-S is the pronunciation. I think it's Aegis. Anyway, he says, noun... Uh, the protection, backing, or support of a particular person or organization. Negotiations were conducted under the aegis of the UN. So yeah, now I know what it means, and that is a weird thing to name your mod. Why would you go the protection or backing or support of a particular organization? What's that called? Oh, aegis? Yeah, we should definitely name a mod that. Weird. That's just a weird thing to name a mod. Favorite comment of the week number two. Uh, Jeremy Gunkel left a comment and said, My shower has a slow leak. I should probably fix that today. Yeah. I mean, definitely. If not today, then tomorrow. If not now, when? If not who? Us! No, I said that wrong. It's if not us, who? Damn, I messed that up. That's from Ghostbusters too. Not Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters as well. It's from Ghostbusters Just, the good version of the Ghostbusters, not the 2016 version of the Ghostbusters. Matthew Hang writes in and says, when you juiced your hand, I juiced my pants. That is, uh, that is super creepy, Jason. Not even gonna lie. Anyway, Josh <laughs> TVA writes in and says, Fuck yeah, Dwayne vapes like me, LMAO. Hashtag always a cloud comp. Yeah, there's people that definitely vape like that. I don't know if I'm one of those people. Obviously not since I rock my Me One all the time. But yeah, Dwayne vapes like it's always a cloud comp. Do you vape like it's always a cloud comp? If you vape like it's always a cloud comp, just let me know down in the comments below. Just do hashtag always a cloud comp and then I'll know who my cloud chasing subscribers are. Anyway, Ambivalent Chaos writes in and says, I love that you admitted to watching porn in between filming vlog segments. (laughs) Yeah, um, you know what? Occasionally, sure. If I'm caught up on work and I'm sitting like waiting for a battery to charge or if I'm if I'm doing whatever, if I'm just sitting here vaping, like if I have some free time, which is pretty rare, I feel like the Internet was invented for porn. And I've been it's one of those things like I'm not like really into porn. Like I don't look at porn and go, oh, yeah, that's so fucking hot. Like just pounding away on some girl like that's kind of gross but i just like to see how far porn has come because i've been looking at internet porn since i was let's see when did i really get the internet 19 i guess 18 or 19 yeah i'm old i got the internet like 18 or 19 and i instantly you know the first thing i fucking look at is porn and so i remember the porn from back in the day and i've seen porn evolve and i just it's one of those things i like to keep track of i like to see where porn's going you know they have virtual reality porn now so that just neckbeards can just never leave their house and just bang imaginary girls all day long. That exists. That's the thing. I've looked at it. I've, I've moved around and saw my environment while a, a female is, is blowing some guy that I'm pretending is me, apparently. I just like to see where, uh, where porn goes and all the technology that porn has. Anyway, final favorite comment of the week. Lester writes in and says, Hi, I'm pooping right now. Absolutely, Lester. Absolutely good for you, man. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap up this here vlog. Let me take a quick look around the room, make sure I didn't forget anything. No, you know what, dude? I think we're all good. I think we're all really good. Oh, fuck. I forgot something. Nope. Wrong. Nick is wrong. I totally forgot something. The pipe. I set up the pipe. It's time to talk about the pipe. Here's a bumper. Ready? Talking about the pipe now. So yeah, this pipe, the pipe three from Heaven's Gifts tank on the inside fairly easy to fill you have to flip it upside down you have to unscrew it from the coil head and hopefully your coil head stays in the base yep little coil head right there I just put three drips down the middle filled up the tank with liquid put this in here I'm using salt nix juice that I got from Hayestown vapes shout out to Hayestown vapes for the salt nick juice this is the spring mint which Ruby Roo was telling me about she said it's her favorite salt nick juice I tried it it's delicious this just goes on top and it's an automatic switch and you just drag on it and this lights up when you drag on it this unscrews to house a battery on the inside and the great thing about this kit is it comes with two little 16340 batteries
batteries. Nope, these are 18350 batteries, two tiny little 18350 batteries and a charger. So literally, if you pick up this kit or if I send it to you like in the $2 sale, you have everything you need except juice. It comes with batteries, a charger and the pipe. A little spring loaded in there. You pop this on and then you just uh, take a drag on it and you watch the thing light up. You can do mouth to lung or you can do like a very restricted lung hit. And it's good. It's a good vape. And it's a good coil head in there. I could see loading this up with some, even some three milligram or some six milligram. This is 20 milligram salt nix. And what's really bizarre about this juice, this spring mint, um, is it tastes almost exactly like the very first e-cig that I ever bought. I bought a Smoke 51 kit with menthol cardamizers on it. And this juice tastes like that juice and it's a flavor I have been searching for for the last eight years. Salt Nix, coming through with the spring mint. It tastes exactly like my first vape. So much nostalgia going on right now. Plus, look at this dope ass pipe, just <laughs> not sure why it's flashing. I think I messed it up. Just fucking vaping a pipe. Anyway, so random, so weird, but it works fucking really well. And there were two different kinds of pipes in there. There was the Zen pipe, which takes an 18650, and it's like this big curved jobber guy. And then there was this little guy, the pipe three, that comes with a little 18350. I'm gonna throw this, I'm gonna throw one of these, maybe not in the next $2 package for the patrons, but maybe the one after that. Does that sound cool? I might even do a, I might even do a $2 sale on my YouTube. In the next vlog, I promise to do a $2 sale on the YouTube. I've got a bunch of pipes here. I've got a bunch of stuff. I've got too much stuff and it needs to go to a good home. I need vapors that will appreciate this more than just fucking sitting on my floor. That's ridiculous. That should never, be, these should be in the hands of vapors. So yeah, next week, definitely gonna do a vlog $2 sale, but dude, pipe, really? Huh, you don't say, hmm. If you ever wanted to vape out of a pipe that looks eh, mostly ugly, but very, very functional, this pipe three, dude, I'll put a link down in the description to Heaven's Gifts where you can look at this if you're interested, but dude, it's a pipe. Anyway, that's rocking, and it actually comes with a little stand here. Like you, you put it on the wooden stand because it doesn't stand up straight. You have to kind of put it on the wooden stand, which is kind of the really bummer part about all e-pipes that I've ever tried. With the exception of the general pipe that I got from Freight Train Mods, none of my pipes have ever stood up by themselves. So that's interesting. All right, cool. I caught something at the end. This is like the second time in vlog history that that's ever happened. Now, let me take one last look. I'm really unsure of myself and make sure I didn't forget anything. Okay, no, now we're all good. Anyway, that's what I got for the vlog, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I will have reviews on Monday and Tuesday this week. We're gonna be all back on track before we get to ECC. Not really sure what's gonna happen at ECC as far as videos. I don't know if I'm gonna shoot one video for ECC. I don't know if I'm gonna shoot multiple videos for ECC. I did multiple videos last year. What did you guys think of those? I don't know. We'll see where this goes. Let me know if you have any ideas of what you would like to see see from ECC. I feel like I've been to so many events that a lot of these event videos, they're kind of very similar and samey and I'm trying to do something different. I had the idea that I could shoot it like a reality TV show, but that would take, I mean, God, so much work and I kind of want to enjoy ECC with my friends. So let me know what you would like to see. Um, but yeah, I'll definitely be at ECC this year. Very excited about this event. It's going to be great. It's going to be huge. Check it out. I'll post a link down in the description to where you can check it out. But anyway, that's what I got, everybody. I'm going to grab my Mew Tank. Are you still leaking? Not leaking. I'm going to grab my Mew Tank. I'm going to go upstairs. I'm going to grab myself something to eat. But that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, even on a Mew Tank, let's keep on vaping. Where the hell did that come from?